Welcome to the next project. Today we're working on a Squire Paranormal Rascal four string bass guitar. This guitar is late 23 and this is early 24, so this guitar is fresh. We are doing just a couple little mods to it. First, we'll be removing the finish from the back of the neck and applying just a really light coat of true oil to keep it from getting dirty. And then we're going to uh, redo the electronics. We are going from a switch to a blend pot. So let's start the next project. I received the owner's guitar in a pretty nice gig bag. It is brand new. This thing still had a little bit of plastic protective wrap on it, uh, original strings. It's ready to go. Um, nicely set up, and honestly, I'm really impressed by the build quality, fit and finish, attention to detail on this particular guitar. Um, the people at the Squire factory, wherever this came from, did a good job. Looked good. Everything is clean and neat, not a bunch of junk all over. As we'll see later when I pull the pick guard off, it looked good on side. Getting ready to remove the finish from the back of the neck, and I'm kind of figuring it out as I go here. Putting on some protective tape to keep me from over sanding into areas, kind of a, a little stop. Uh, hit it with, I think it was 180, you know, or 120, ah, 120 grit paper. Um, then I went up to, it's going to tell us here in a second, what did I do next? Hmm, I don't remember. This was like days ago, and it was cold. My brain was fogged up and frosty. Um, used uh, my hands and rubber pad on a lot of it. Oh, we went to 220 grit paper then. There it is, 220, see? Proof. And we're, oh gosh, 27 minutes in already. Ah, oh, final sandpaper with 320 grit. Uh, this neck was really quite straight, but as I was sanding the, uh, the urethane clear finish off, I did find a few little waves in it, which were almost invisible. But the neck is a bit smoother now than it was, and it was in really good shape when I received it. Uh, cleaning it up, and we're about ready for finish. Or refinish. Or the unfinish. There we go. We'll call it the unfinish. And here we're just about to apply the first coat of unfinish and a brand new bottle of true oil poke just a little bitty hole in it you don't have to rip that whole protective cap off uh, the less air that gets to true oil the better uh, it'll last a little longer on the shelf um, but i scrubbed on and scrubbed off the first coat i didn't puddle it on i mean it is thin it's if it was a warm day it'd be dry in half an hour but i did let this set basically overnight and then I came back and hit it with some steel wool and uh, scrubbed on and scrubbed off a second coat. And really, this is not for build. This is just for protection. Keep um, a person's oily fingerprints and things from instantly turning the back of this maple neck gray. We've all seen the road-worn maple uh, fender is known for. And that will still happen with this. Um, this true oil is so thin, it's not going to last forever. It will wear away but it will be a slow natural wear. It won't just turn gray overnight. And it's looking pretty good. It does have very nice satin. It is super smooth, feels great. Very nice neck. And it's time to peel off some tape. Mmm, ooh yeah, looking good. We have removed the finish on the neck from here to here and cleaned it up good, sanded it all down, got it nice and pretty, took out a couple little waves that I didn't even notice when I was originally looking at it, but it's straighter now than it was when I got it. Applied the first coat of Scrub On Scrub Off True Oil, so it looks like a natural finish, and it is, but it has a little bit of protection to it, so this will wear through, but it's some protection. I was looking at it uh, once the true oil was on back to here, and I didn't really care for the high gloss look back here and the nice satiny matte finish here. So I did go back and sand the sides in the back of the heel and then applied true oil to that. So it's an even 
dull matte satin finish everywhere all the way up to here and that's where it transitions into the factory gloss which looks good it looks a little more unified now than it did when i had gloss back here even though it was really well done nice transition lines it just looked kind of funny having shiny you know above the pick guard back here and then the dullish matte finish here let's continue the next project I don't know if there is ever a project that will just go perfectly and smoothly. Um, taking this apart went perfectly and smoothly, so that was good. I, I enjoyed the ride there. But this is about where I realized I had my first uh, obstacle to overcome, and it was where the new blend pot was going to go in. There was a three-way switch there, and the hole's way too big for the blend pot. So I scratched my head, looked around, found a big flat washer. Uh, an old sharpie that doesn't work and I made a filler that with that washer as a backer will go right in and the blend pot is going to fit in that hole perfectly. As the wiring kicked off I received a wiring plan with a kit when I received the guitar to work on follow the plan but the results weren't exactly what I was expecting nor what the owner was expecting so we went to an option two, uh, rewired it dropped the jumper ground and grounding of the two lugs on the blend pot and that helped a great deal however we were still having some kind of flat tone response so in option three I changed out uh, to basically a double humbucker single long single tone typical guitar wiring also went from a 250k pot for tone to a 500k pot for tone and I think we are where we need to be. Here we're going to take a quick look at the wiring monstrosity that I put together to get this guitar wired together and uh, this is actually option one wiring which I've discussed really wasn't what either I or the owner were expecting. So we did an option two, which removed a jumper ground from the blend pot, which helped greatly. Um, then, But the output from the tone was still pretty flat. So we moved on to option three, which is basically a double humbucker, single volume, single tone, basically six string guitar type wiring. And that helped a lot with the addition of going from a 250K tone pot to a 500K tone pot. That seemed to give a, uh, the extra versatility that this bass needs. And it's sounding a lot better. Huge difference from option one wiring. Reassembly went really well, and I am really, really glad I put in a quick disconnect ground from the bridge to the electronics, not knowing at the time that I would be pulling this apart and modifying the wiring a couple more times. So that little feeling I had that, hey, maybe I should do that, really paid off. It's a, a twin plug. Um, both sides of the plug are ground, so it's got super good contact within the plug itself. Everything else went together really well. Like I said before, this guitar is really well manufactured. They did a great job. Everything fits super well. Great finish on it. Clean inside all of the cavities. You know, there wasn't a bunch of buffing compound all over. The routing was pretty clean, pretty smooth. Very nice bass guitar. I don't know what it costs, but uh, definitely worthwhile. A good, good purchase, it looks like. We are reaching the end of the project, and I want to thank everybody for riding along with me on this one. It's been a lot of fun. I've learned quite a few things. The blend pot wiring, that's been an experience. Thanks again. Please subscribe if you haven't done so already. Hit the like button, share the video if you can, ring the bell for future notifications. Until next time, take care of yourself and those around you. Bye. Thank mm -hmm. you.